What's the best wireless dog fence? If you want an invisible dog fence that doesn't require you to bury wires, then you're left with two product classes. And depending on how you plan to use it, one technology is likely to make a lot more sense than the other. Make sure to check out the video description to see the best way to let your dog enjoy your property unleashed, and also for any updates to this video that may arise over time. I've been working with invisible dog fences for over four years now, and believe it or not, I've already seen a lot of products come and go. But if you want a system that's reliable and built to last, rest assured that there are some tried and true brands that you can turn to. And I don't just talk the talk. Over the past several months, I've actually strapped on several of these collars on my neck and conducted field testing from a dog's perspective. I've been able to see firsthand how accurate and repeatable these systems are, how their warning and boundary feedback logics work, and I've even had the displeasure of getting shocked by the collars. Several times, actually, but usually it was intentional. Yes, most of these products utilize static correction, more commonly known as a shock, to train your dog. Or at least they give you the option to. And, you guessed it, it really f***ing hurts! Maybe I'll sneak in a gem or two before this video comes to a close. So yeah, I can't advocate using the static correction to train your dog. But I'm not here to tell you how to train your dog. I'm here to help you find the best wireless dog fence for your specific use case. And honestly, I don't know anyone else who has subjected themselves to as much torture for the cause as I have. So let's get to it. The first thing you have to consider when buying a wireless dog fence, as with any invisible dog fence, is that your dog's gonna need boundary training in order for the both of you to achieve success. These aren't products that you can just put around your dog's neck and suddenly you can let them run around unsupervised. What would likely happen is that when your dog first unknowingly crossed the boundary and got hit with that static correction, they would get scared. They would run through the fence, it would be an incredibly traumatic experience for them, and at the end of the day, it just wouldn't work the way it was intended. Proper boundary training typically takes about two to four weeks with short daily sessions, obviously depending on your dog. It works best with lots of patience, lots of positive reinforcement, and just an all-around can-do attitude. Now, the more traditional systems will just give you an outline of a training plan in the owner's manual, and you're on your way. You know, hopefully you can make it work. But some of the more modern and advanced systems come equipped with a substantial amount of training support. One system includes training modules from a nationally renowned dog trainer, and another system even offers a live training session with a professional trainer over Zoom, absolutely free. So sure, you can get up and running on your own, but this additional support is certainly nice to have. And we'll circle back to this later in the video, but for now, let's start narrowing down your options. As I mentioned at the top of this video, there are two classes of products to consider when it comes to wireless dog fences. The first is the traditional wireless dog fence, which utilizes a central transmitter and emits a circular boundary that radiates outwards. The second, more modern technology is the GPS dog fence. With these systems, all the components are contained within the collar, and you typically create fences via a smartphone app. There are plenty of upsides and downsides to each of these designs, and we'll get into all of that. But perhaps the biggest deciding factor for a lot of dog owners is going to come down to the size of your yard. As with any GPS device, GPS dog fences are subject to drift over the course of the day due to the positions of the satellites orbiting the Earth and how that interacts with objects like trees, and also interference from cloud coverage, all sorts of factors like that. As a result, you're going to want to build in some forgiveness between any hazards like roads and allow some space so that the boundary keeps your dog out of your neighbor's yard, for example. So really, GPS systems are best suited for people with properties over a half acre in size. That makes sure your dog truly has enough freedom to move about your property so that they can really enjoy themselves. Now, some GPS dog fences don't necessarily specify the half acre as a minimum, but the same considerations apply, so it's really a pretty reasonable rule of thumb. On the flip side, with traditional wireless dog fences, you typically run into problems when you want to use them on properties over half an acre. Usually the maximum they can support is around a half an acre to three quarters of an acre, although they can work with quite small properties. And conversely, the maximum fence size with a GPS dog fence is, for the purposes of this conversation, virtually unlimited. So I think right away yard size is going to give many of you a strong push towards one technology or the other. And I'll tell you what I think are the best options for either class a little later in this video. But before you completely make up your mind, there are a few other important factors to consider when choosing between traditional wireless dog fences and GPS wireless dog fences. The first is going to be boundary shape. Now as I mentioned earlier, traditional wireless dog fences are typically circles, which can be somewhat inconvenient based on the layout of your yard, your house, and access to electrical outlets where you'll be mounting the transmitter. You can make the circle bigger and smaller, but that's about the extent of the control you have. GPS dog fences are really quite customizable when it comes to both shape and size. And some of them are incredibly customizable, allowing for as many as 1,500 virtual fence posts. And while both of these types can be portable, remember that with traditional wireless dog fences, you're often going to need to have them plugged in, whereas GPS dog fences are really designed to accommodate use on the go. They even allow you to make multiple fences so you can customize the shape and size wherever you use them. 
And GPS dog fences also function as trackers, so if your dog does run through the boundary, you'll usually be able to receive an escape notification on your smartphone, and you'll be able to track them down quickly so you can bring them back to safety. And from your dog's perspective, traditional wireless dog fences are typically a little light on the warning system before issuing that static correction. So much so that I've had a hard time avoiding getting shocked even when I knew what I was doing. The GPS dog fences are a bit more robust in this regard. Since they use computers, they can accommodate more complex logic to alert and warn your dog as they approach the boundary, giving them the opportunity opportunity to return to the safe zone before issuing a correction. Then there's interference to consider with traditional wireless systems. These systems usually work by issuing correction once the caller loses signal from the transmitter. That means if the signal gets blocked by large appliances, metal roofs, or other large metal or solid objects, your dog can be issued a static correction while in the safe zone. This is less of a problem with GPS dog fences. You can potentially run into some issues when using them indoors, but there are some safeguards you can implement to prevent this entirely. Then there's battery life to consider. Since GPS dog fences are in constant communication with satellites and your cell phone, there's a huge power demand on the battery. GPS dog fences usually have a battery life somewhere around a day, although they are rechargeable so you can simply charge them overnight when you're done using them. Traditional wireless dog fences are much simpler systems, and as such they're able to achieve battery lives on the order of weeks and even months. That said, a lot of them use a proprietary battery that you won't be able to find everywhere, so that's also something to consider. And if you have multiple dogs with traditional wireless fence systems, you can usually just buy additional collars, which are typically cheaper than the entire system itself. With GPS dog fences, you'll still have to buy an additional collar for each dog. The main difference here is that the collar is the full price tag, which brings me to my last point before I recommend my favorite products for each class, price. Traditional wireless dog fences are definitely the more affordable option. They typically come in around the $300 mark at the time of filming. GPS dog fences tend to be more expensive if you want a well-designed system. These typically range from the mid to high hundreds to even the low thousands at the time of filming. Alright, so now for my favorites of each product class. And after that, I'll have one more quick little nugget for you guys. We'll start with my absolute favorite wireless dog fence, which is one of the GPS systems. If you want nothing but the best, then the spot on GPS dog fence is the way to go. It's super easy to use, it's the most reliable system I've worked with, and it truly excels at its primary form and function, being an invisible dog fence. The Spot On was designed by a team who developed electronics for the United States military. Their designs had to be robust and darn near perfect. Soldiers' lives depended on it. Their experience shines through in the Spot On GPS dog fence, which is manufactured here in the US. They really don't make any compromises when it comes to quality. I'll leave a link to my best deal for the Spot On in the video description here. While the Spot On doesn't require a subscription, it does have a hefty price tag. For that reason, I would say the runner-up in the GPS dog fence product class is the Halo Collar. It's quite a bit more affordable than the Spot On. The Halo Collar is probably most notable for its association with renowned dog trainer Cesar Milan, who designed the training modules included as part of your subscription, which the Halo Collar does indeed require. That said, you don't get a free live session with a professional trainer like you get with the Spot On. In my field testing, the Halo Collar hasn't been quite as precise as the Spot On, and there are some design choices that aren't my favorite, but if you take the time to set it up properly, it works well enough to get the job done. I'll leave a link to the Halo Collar in the video description as well. As for traditional wireless dog fences, your best bets are going to be two options from PetSafe. They've been in the game as long as I have and longer, and their products have stood the test of time. The first is the PetSafe Stay and Play, which is a bit more of an updated system. It covers up to three quarters of an acre and it comes with a rechargeable collar. And a little bit more affordable than that is PetSafe's claim to fame, the PetSafe Wireless Pet Containment System. It's a little bit less elegant than the Stay and Play, and it only covers up to a half an acre, but it has a long track record speaking for it. I'll leave links to both PetSafe options in the video description below. 